What's up everyone, welcome to my channel. This video is about the basics of aerodynamics. Here, we will be discussing about the different terms which are commonly used while working in the field of race car aerodynamics. So without spending much time, let's start now. So starting with the most common geometry, the aerofoil. So here you can see we are having an aerofoil. It's basically a structure with a curved surface that is designed to give the most favorable ratios of lift, downforce and drag. How this aerofoil produces downforce, I have explained in my previous video. You can check that video from the i button above or from the link in the description box. Now if you want to see how the air interacts with the aerofoil, we have to keep this aerofoil in the field of flow. So here you can see we are having the aerofoil and it is placed in the air field of flow. Can you see how the air is interacting with the aerofoil? No you can't. Even I cannot see. Because air is invisible and we cannot see it, we can just feel it. For seeing anything, an object must reflect a light whose wavelength lies in the visible range of human spectrum. Here, the air is not reflecting a light of wavelength that lies in the visible range. So, we cannot see the air. But if we mix air with some amount of coloring dye, then we can see it. In aerodynamics, smoke is used as a coloring dye because it has the density near to the air and will behave almost the same like the air flowing over the car body. And the best part is, now you can see the air interacting with the aerofoil. So here this is the wind tunnel, this is aerofoil and this is the smoke injector. Now as the air flows over the aerofoil, it takes the shape of the aerofoil. This curve that projects the motion of the fluid over the aerofoil body is called streamline. Now if there is a steady flow, then these streamlines will be parallel to the local velocity direction. If the streamlines near the solid surface follow exactly the shape of the body, then this type of flow is called the attached flow. And if the streamlines does not follow the solid surface shape, then this type of flow is called detached or separated flow. There can be different flows around the body. Here I will be discussing about those flows which are important for aerodynamics. Number one is the steady and unsteady flow. Steady flow is the type of flow in which the properties like velocity, pressure and density at a point does not change with respect to time. That is dv by dt equals to zero, d rho by dt equals to zero and dp by dt equals to zero. Now if velocity, pressure and density at a point changes with respect to time, then this type of flow is called unsteady flow. That is, dv by dt is not equals to zero, dp by dt is not equals to zero and d rho by dt is not equals to zero. Number two is the uniform and non-uniform flow. Uniform flow is a type of flow in which the velocity at any given time does not change with respect to the length of direction of flow. That is, dv by ds equals to zero. And if the velocity at any given time changes with the length of direction of flow, then this type of flow is called the non-uniform flow. That is, dv by ds is not equals to zero. Number three is the laminar and turbulent flow. These two flows are most important while studying the aerodynamics of race car because the features such as flow separation, vehicle drag, lift and downforce are significantly affected according to the laminar and turbulent flow. So what is laminar flow? It is a type of flow in which the fluid particles move along the well-defined path or streamline and all streamlines are straight and parallel. It is also called the free stream flow and the motion of fluid particles is well organized here. Now other is the turbulent flow in which the fluid particle move in a zigzag way and due to the movement of fluid particles in zigzag way, the formation of eddies takes place which are responsible for the high energy loss. Note, the average velocity can be same for both laminar and turbulent flow. Also, when the vehicles travel to an undisturbed environment, then Initially, the flow can be considered as laminar, but it can convert into turbulent flow due to the disturbance created by the vehicle itself. Now let's understand the property of the fluid that affects the type of flow and due to which there is friction drag. Yes, I'm talking about viscosity. Viscosity is the measure of fluid resistance to motion. It is the property of fluid that offers the resistance between the movement of one layer of fluid over the other layer. Let's understand this with an example. Here we are having a flat stationary plate and the fluid is flowing with a constant velocity, v infinite. Now let's focus on the bottommost layer, which is adjacent to the stationary plate. An adhesive friction force will act between the stationary plate and the fluid particles. This force is called the shear force and it will try to slow down the moving fluid particles. As adhesive forces are greater than the cohesive forces here, so the bottommost layer will come at rest and there will be a no slip condition. Now, as the bottom layer is stationary, it will try to resist the motion of the above layer and will slow down the above layer. So, a shear force will exist between them also. Similarly, the shear force will exist between the every adjacent layer and there will be a relative motion. 
As we move up in the y direction, the effect of this shear force will reduce and we will get the maximum constant velocity v infinite at the top. So the bottommost layer is moving with the velocity zero and the top layer is moving with the velocity v infinite. This will create a velocity profile between the top and the bottom layer like this. At any point on this velocity profile, we will get an gradient called velocity gradient that is du by dy. According to Newton's law of viscosity, shear stress is directly proportional to velocity gradient. So, as velocity gradient increases, shear stress also increases and the proportionality constant here is called viscosity. So, viscosity is the internal friction of fluid in motion and it smooths the difference in the velocity by increasing the shear stress in proportion to the velocity gradient. We can write shear stress equals to shear force divided by area. So, if by A equals to mu multiplied by du by dy where A is the area of the plate. Now for testing a car or any other object in wind tunnel, generally small scale models are used. For comparing the results of small scale model with the full scale model, some dimensionless numbers are used. One of the most important number used for comparison is called the Reynolds number. It is defined as the ratio of inertia force of flowing fluid and the viscous force of fluid. So Reynolds number equals to inertia force divided by viscous force. This will give Reynolds number Re equals to rho VL by mu. Where L is the characteristic length, which can be taken equals to the length of the car, or if the car is having wing, it can be taken equals to the cord length, or we can find the local value of Reynolds number by taking a local point distance with the leading edge of the body. Reynolds number also tells about the nature of flow, that is, whether the fluid flow is turbulent or laminar. So this is all about the basic terms that are used in aerodynamics of race car. This much for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have any queries, you can comment in the comment box. If you find the video useful, do like it, share it. Also, subscribe to my channel, hit the bell icon to get the latest updates. If you want to check my blogs on vehicle dynamics, automobiles and software, you can check on my website. The link is in the description box. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring.